Welcome to The Economy Magazine at I-24 News, where we give you a daily view on world markets and the global economy. I'm Natalie Ehrlich. Today, all the world is watching Greece. Voters staunchly reject international bailout terms in Sunday's referendum. And Greek tourism remains on edge as the impact remains unknown. Let's start now with the headlines. Well, in a sharp rebuke to creditors, Greece delivered a firm no in Sunday's referendum. More than 61 percent of Greeks voted against austerity measures and other overhauls that Europe and the IMF had demanded in recent bailout discussions. The decisive outcome is likely to embolden the prime minister, Alexis Tsipras, who has been pushing now for softer terms with negotiators. Our reporter Daniel Roth has been covering the news from Athens over the last few days. Let's check in with him to hear the latest on the ground. Hi, Daniel. Thank you for being with us. We heard the finance minister has resigned. This is a surprising move. What's the explanation that you're hearing in Greek media? Well, a uh, leading explanation is uh, that this was a surprising but sensible move. Uh, everyone here was uh, was not shocked after hearing it. It was uh, it was big morning news, but. But really, after a week of uh, the finance minister, uh, Yanis Varoufakis, uh, talking about Eurozone leaders, uh, calling them terrorists, saying, uh, using extreme language, it seemed like the only way forward for Alexis Tsipras uh, to sort of uh, show after this major victory, 60-40, just a little over 60 percent voting no, uh, to show that he really does want to go back to the negotiating table, that this no was a vote against austerity and not a vote uh, against the Eurozone, not a vote against the European Union. Well, what is the mood on the streets like right now? Are people able to withdraw money from the banks? Can you fill up your car with gas? Yeah, it's uh, it's not quite so extreme as that, but uh, there there is gas in the in the gas stations, and there are is money in the ATMs. Now, one of the stories here is that uh, 60 euros was the amount per day that that people were limited to taking out. So uh, lineups have been long, and 20 euro bills have been uh, hard to come by. So that's actually. Uh, just by way of reality, dropped to 50 for most people at most ATMs. Uh, as I reported yesterday, the lineups at the ballot boxes were pretty short uh, compared to the lineups at the ATMs, they, they, some round-the-corner lineups. Well, that's a fascinating anecdote there. But what can we expect next for Grace in the upcoming days? Well. Alexis Tsipras, at the, at the end of the night, made it clear, again, that, that this was a no vote to austerity. This was a no vote to being, uh, as, as they said, bullied and blackmailed by, uh, by their lenders. Uh, Alexis Tsipras also made it clear that he wants to go back to the negotiating table. Now, there's, there's a, a few different scenarios that can take place in, in the next few days, weeks, and months. Uh, I think that we're going to see negotiations start in the not too distant future. The qu big question is are those negotiations going to yield any kind of uh, positive moves forward for Greece and the European Union, or will things fall apart? Uh, that's on the political side. On the political side, there is a uh, uh, both a potential of a deal being made, something that is digestible for the Greek people um, and palatable for Eurozone leaders. Um, there's also the potential that those negotiations will fall apart for a number of reasons. On the other side, on the economic side, there's the big question of Greek banks. Uh, will they be forced to look to another currency if uh, if capital is not going to flow in anytime soon from the ECB. Interesting point there about the negotiations that we can expect going forward now. Do you think that we'll see these creditors soften their demands in the wake of this outcome of the referendum? This is really the big question, and this was something that uh, the Greek people, Greek leaders, uh, no one here was really sure about what the reaction would be from the rest of the European Union. Uh, either way, uh, it's very unclear as whether the European Union will see this no vote as, uh, as 
uh, a vote to to deal with them still, but for Alexis Tsipras to deal with them with a strengthened hand. Uh, or if they'll really see, as they've been threatening, uh, to see this as a as a no vote to being a part of the union, and that uh, that pressure will be on for for uh, a Grexit. Um, it's really unclear as of now. There's going to be a, a meeting tomorrow, as far as we understand, uh, of European leaders. This morning, Greek leaders are already meeting to, to determine what to do next, how to approach the European Union. Again, uh, for the Greek leadership, the, the way forward is negotiations. That's, they've made that quite clear. It's unclear if that's the way forward for the European Union uh, as a whole. Well, thank you, as ever, for your reporting on the streets of Athens. Our reporter, Daniel Roth. Well, Greece is a shock for world markets, but Chinese stocks surged on Monday after Beijing kicked off an unprecedented series of rescue efforts. Over the weekend, a collective pledge by China's top brokerages and fund managers to invest at least 120 billion yuan, some $19.3 billion into stocks, as well as a promise by state investor Central Hu Jin to buy more ETFs helped prepare the stocks higher. Well, the Shanghai Composite Index opened 7.8 percent higher, but end of the day up only 2.4 percent at 3,775 and 91 points. Meanwhile, in Japan, shares of Toshiba fell 5 percent in early Monday trading on fears the third-party probe into the company's prior accounting practices was finding more errors than previously anticipated. The Nikkei Business Daily reported that the newly discovered irregularities could result in an earnings markdown of some 150 billion yen. In a statement on Saturday, the company said it had no information to disclose, citing the continuing investigation. Toshiba's businesses range from laptop computers to nuclear power plants. Due to the ongoing internal probe, it has not been able to disclose its books for the year that ended in March. Well, Rolls Royce issued its third profit warning in just over a year on Monday, pointing to lower oil prices and weaker demand for some of its aircraft engines. The company last issued a profit warning in February, claiming the sharp drop in oil prices had heightened uncertainty for markets as well as consumers. Well, initially, Rolls Royce anticipated a 2015 profit of some 1.4 to 1.5 billion pounds. But on Monday, the firm revised that to some 1.3. 1.4 billion pounds. Shares of the British engineering firm fell nearly 9 percent on that announcement. Well, Greeks overwhelmingly voted against international creditors' bailout terms, likely now to embolden the Greek PM even further as he heads back to the negotiation table. Greece is back to the negotiating table. Strong after the referendum, Tsipras demands an end to austerity policies. Europe and the IMF, who lent Greece 230 billion euros, are ready to talk, but not with anyone. The Troikia would have demanded for the departure of Varoufakis, a departure that Tsipras believes will help negotiations. And last night, the former economy minister had already announced his resignation, making himself a megaphone for a country on edge. From the beginning, the creditors were planning on closing the bank so they can humiliate us on these two fronts, the front of austerity and the front of unsustainable debt. The overwhelming Greek debt will be discussed again. This week, an IMF report admitted that it was unbearable. Tsipras demands a 20-year grace period and asks for the debt to have a 30 percent cut. We are ready to continue negotiations with a credible financial plan, a plan of reforms that will be accepted by Greek society and we will have social justice as a criteria, with the transfer of burdens from the weak to the economically strong, and a credible plan of immediate investments in cooperation with the European Commission. At the same time, however, the issue of the debt will be on the table for negotiation. The negotiations in Brussels are very complicated. Does Martin Schultz think it's already too late? The Speaker of Parliament began evoking a humanitarian case for defaulting countries. The promise of Prime Minister Tsipras to the Greek people that uh, with the no, the position of Greece uh, for negotiating a better deal would become better is in my eyes not true. I think we should tomorrow, and at latest on Tuesday for the Eurozone Summit, discuss about a humanitarian aid program for Greece. 
On Tuesday, there is a meeting of Eurozone countries. Francois Holland and Angela Merkel already met in Paris today. France is pushing for Germany to further concessions, but Angela Merkel is facing an internal opinion that largely supports the Grexit. And any new agreement with Greece must now be ratified by the Bundestag. Athens may have been the party last night, but the end of the bridge has not yet been crossed for Greece. Well, in the wake of these dramatic events in Athens, the tourism industry in Greece remains on edge now as the impact of voters' decision in Sunday's referendum on these bailout conditions only begins to be felt. Over the weekend, the streets of Athens seemed normal, full of residents out for the weekend walks, and tourists from around the world were also out, even as major protests surrounding this historic referendum on austerity in Greece and capital controls have filled headlines. Even with all the movement, visitors don't seem worried. I think we're a bit apprehensive coming here, but um, since we've been here, we've been surprised at how little um, activity there is around. It, there's, there's demonstrations, but they seem to be peaceful, and there's queues at the ATMs, but everyone's quite pleasant and, and getting on with their lives. Though tourists are optimistic, proprietors and professionals of Athens are worried, and some even report losses. The last-minute uh, bookings, they have stopped, they have been eliminated. Uh, about also there is a lack of interest for the month of September and October due to the unsafety uh, has created the problem of the Greek uh, monetary base, the Greek banks. Others say Greece is too attractive a destination to fail and it will weather any rough patches. Greece has a very big power that uh, is the tourism. Uh, we accept uh, more tourists for the next year, so we're not worried about the tourists, but this economic situation. Because we have many islands, we have, uh, we have a very beautiful country for the tourists, so we're not afraid. The tourism sector makes up about 17% of GDP and employs about 350,000 people in Greece. And with a record 23 million people visiting last year, the country hopes to continue that upward trend no matter the situation. This is Daniel Roth in Athens for I-24 News. Well, for further insight now on Greece's decision and what to expect going forward, we are joined on set by Moriel Matalon of Gornitsky an Israeli law firm. Thank you very much for being with us. So Greeks took a bold and perhaps brave move here. What can we expect going forward? Are we going to see a Grexit? Well, this morning, the Greek people woke up to a new era. Last night, they all celebrated for the first time maybe in history that the country is celebrating going bankruptcy. But after a lot of Uzo and a lot of Sirtaki, there's the hangover. And in this hangover, the Greek people woke today, this woke up this morning into a new situation. And they are, in a way, like a patient going out of a doctor's clinic. And the doctor tells the patient, you need to have a major surgery. And the patient says, no, I don't want to do it. And the doctor says, OK. And he walks out. And for a moment, he's very happy. He's not going to have a surgery. But the next morning or the next day, he will recognize the fact that he's still ill. And he will need great uh, measures to be taken. He will need a diet. He will need to do exercise. Maybe at the end of the day, he will need to have the operation. So the Greek people are now for a new struggle in order to resolve their problems, in order to renew their economy. Well, over the last few months, with this impasse and the standoff between Europe and Greece, this is, in a sense, like a game of poker here, right? So at what point are we here? Are the Greeks really just, are they ready to leave the Eurozone? Are they, they reached the point where they're just willing to risk everything and start all over again? Well, it's brinkmanship. And if you look at companies or private people who are on the verge of bankruptcy, in many cases, they try to walk and to see if the other party is really way, uh, uh, ready to take all these severe measures Today, the Greek people understand that they need to do this for themselves with Europe or without Europe. So the ball returns to the hand of Europe. And my understanding or my thinking is that Europe will recognize that it cannot really depart from, you, from uh, Greece. It needs to embrace Greece, probably with a different set of rules. And again, if you look at the private economy, if you are a lender and you have uh, a client, a debtor, who cannot repay his loan, 
What do you do? You simply forgo the loan or you try to get whatever you can. The truth of the matter is that Greece was not in a position to repay its debt. So now it's for Europe either to say, no, we're not willing to play uh, this game like they said before the referendum or like any politicians. After the vote was taken, they will need to reconsider and they will try to get what they can. And at the end of the day, like any creditor, they will need to take a haircut. After they will take a haircut, which has been done in history. Uh, Germany itself, after the two world wars, did not repay all its debt. Well, that's a fascinating point. Thank you so much for your insight. It is yet to be seen. Of course, we're hearing a lot of mixed messages coming out of Europe on that side. But we'll be watching this story very closely. Again, join us tomorrow, same time, same place, from the Jaffa Report in Tel Aviv. I'm Naomi Ehrlich. Thank you.